Hi everybody, my name is Kyle Stetson, uh, as she mentioned, and I am a political science major, but before everyone starts heading to the door, don't worry, this is not a 23-year-old about to explain to you the merits of any political party whatsoever. Instead, I'm going to talk to you about something maybe just as radical and hopefully more interesting, and that is how everyone here can and should become a farmer. Now, no. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, why would I want to be a farmer? I can go to the market literally any time of the day and get all the food I could possibly want from all around the world. Granted. But where is that food really coming from? And what is it really costing you beyond the dollar you're spending on it? Well, most of our food comes from a big factory farm somewhere in the Midwest or somewhere around the world. These are huge, land-intensive, water-intensive, fossil fuel-intensive operations that require immense amounts of upkeep and pump gallons and gallons of fertilizers and pesticides into our water supplies, into our drinking water, into our natural reservoirs. Really bad stuff. And the worst part about it is after this cost, after this pollution, and after this waste, 40% of it goes uneaten. 40%. That's 4 in 10 pounds. You buy 10 apples and you throw 4 in the trash can. This is the system that somehow we're okay with. So maybe, hopefully, you're thinking, all right, fair, maybe the marketplace is not the best place to buy food. But, I mean, I see half of you are students, and the other half of you, I'm sure, have lived in Maine long enough not to be able to just pack your bags and move to the Midwest and start a farm of your own and do things better. Absolutely not. And I think the way to get there, for you to all be farmers, is aquaponics. Aquaponic technology is very similar to hydroponic technology, in which a plant is suspended in water and fertilizer instead of soil. This technology is great because it allows us to grow food in unconventional spaces, indoors mainly, in basements, anywhere you want to put a system, you can grow food. The big difference here is that aquaponics uses fish manure cultivated from within the system instead of external fertilizers, which cuts down on the chemical input necessary to grow a garden. It also makes it a lot easier. Um, the system requires really minimal upkeep. This is uh, one of our tanks here. These fish have thankfully survived overnight. Um, and again, <laughs> um, with nothing more than a daily regimen of fish food and a pump, um, which is not active now, or you would hear a pleasant little bubbling over my microphone. Um, it's as simple as feeding these fish once a day, and we have a little garden going here. Um, it creates a symbiotic relationship between plants and fish. Basically, you feed the fish, the, fans, the, the fish poop, and the poop feeds the plants. It's as simple as that. Um, so basically, with this, um, with this in mind, I got together with a few of my friends, and I started a company with a very simple goal, to build systems that anybody can use. Um, so, and that's what we're doing. Our motto is, if you can feed fish, you can have a garden. And as the non-engineer of the group, I often find myself the litmus test of, if I can keep this thing going in my room, Anybody else can as well. Um, and it's regardless of experience, if you, if you want to do it, it's as simple as that. Um, we have one of our systems here. Uh, we have um, Swiss chard growing over two lovely little cichlids. Um, and it's, it really is as simple as that. So we got to work. We um, were members of a fraternity on campus who graciously gave us a 10 by 10 walk-in closet with no windows to start our first laboratory. And based on the, the potential of this technology, we, we were fine with that. And uh, within a few weeks, we had uh, flowering plant life in a fraternity house basement. Now, either from personal experience or reputation, I'm sure you all are somewhat aware of the cleanliness level of a fraternity house basement. And I'm here to tell you, you're absolutely wrong. It's worse than you know. But um, using nothing more than a glow light uh, and um, the fish waste, we had this garden going. And I think my favorite part of this project was you walked into this room, this musty old walk-in freezer, and there was fresh air. We, our, our garden was making fresh air in a very inhospitable place. So a few weeks we had these plants, and a few weeks later we had flowering vegetables. We were nibbling on our lettuce. It was amazing. And then a few weeks after that, all of our fish died from a fungus. But we weren't discouraged. We had literally tasted the fruits of our success, and we wanted more. So we got to work on the model that you can see here. This is a small-scale unit designed for windowsills so that anyone in here with a dorm room who's interested in farming for yourself, anyone with any amount of space and even a little bit of desire is going to be able to take the first steps towards building a farming system for themselves. Now, I'm going to admit, a few plants in a fraternity house basement, a few plants on your windowsill, it's a small step. But I think it's an important first step. I think it's an important first step 
towards fixing what's broken about our current means of producing food. I think it's an important first step to empower people to take action for themselves, to become more reliant. And I think it's a vital step in allowing all of us to work together to build a more sustainable, environmentally conscious way of feeding ourselves. In the 1940s, Americans were asked to plant victory gardens in their backyards to help with the war effort. If the estimates about climate change are correct, we face an even graver threat today in the form of climate change. And I think that aquaponic technology can be the victory garden of our generation and allow us all to move towards a safer, greener, and more resilient uh, agricultural future. Thank you very much.